a lot of people that I spoke with are, would, would say that they're spiritual but not religious. And I had long conversations with other people on the route. And many of our conversations had to do with the quality of life, with busyness, whether or not we're focused on the things that are important, whether we're connecting with our families and friends, whether we're living out our values. Many, many conversations this way. And that convinced me that um, this is not just a pastoral spiritual issue for those who are in the church, it's a live issue within our culture. Mm -hmm. And it's really an ev evangelistic issue, it's a missional issue. And um, I, I, I decided um, on that basis that this deep hunger that we know goes on in our culture, this spiritual hunger that we see all around us, and this sense of being overwhelmed and busy are related. They're driving each other. And if Christians aren't doing a good job of living in different ways, if Christians aren't adequately exemplifying different models of living, I don't think we're going to reach into the spiritual hunger that goes on within our culture. Yeah, and that's why we're here today, yeah. right? We have lots to learn. So one of the things that you focus on heavily in the book is technology and the use of technology right. and how it is sort of has the tendency to take us off this mark of focusing on those things mm -hmm. that should be priority. So let's just talk about that. Sure. Why is technology identified as really or the use of it, yeah. uh, culprit. Well, thanks for the distinction. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not talking against technology or criticizing technology. We all use technology. Every culture needs technology. We appreciate uh, technology. You know, there's all kinds of technology being used right now, and uh, we all experience technology every day. So it's not, it's not technology itself that's an issue. It's how we relate to it and how it forms us or deforms us. Mm -hmm. that's, that's my question. And if we don't... My, my concern is that if we don't pay attention, if we're not deliberate, we get swept along with certain priorities and that our use of technology can supplant or displace the things that we value the most. So just a little example. Mm -hmm. uh, yesterday I was driving down from up north and I was on the highway and I had the same dynamic that always happens when I drive on the highway. In theory, I always intend to drive according to the speed limit. I mean, don't we all? Really? Right. Um, but we're the only ones in Ontario. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Just this group. <laughs> because what you'll notice is if you, if, you, if you drive less than 120 kilometers on the highway, even though 100 is the limit, everybody passes you, right? Most, almost everybody passes you. So I always say to myself, this time I'm going to drive the speed limit. And I have three reasons, three elevated lofty reasons. Um, uh, saves money. I'm thrifty. <laughs> That's a good one. And uh, supposedly I like to be environmentally responsible. And oh yes, it's the law. <laughs> so I'm gonna drive the speed limit. But if I'm not paying attention, um, and this happens all the time, I find myself just sort of conforming with how everybody else drives. And I have a little uh, alarm on my gauge actually that tells me when I hit, uh, hit a certain level over the speed limit, <laughs> it goes off, it chimes. And our joke is, there, it also chimes when the, when the uh, temperature plummets. No. Oh. So um, if my wife's with me and she hears the chime, she goes, ah, how fast are you going? I say, oh, well, just went below uh, freezing uh, <laughs> outside. It doesn't work that well in June. But, um, so I have this alarm that informs me. And, I, and what, I, what I find is, unless I'm paying attention, I just get swept up along mm. with the agenda of everybody else. Now, the technology can also help me be better behaved. So one is the chime that reminds me, and the other is I have uh, cruise control, and so if I'm really disciplined, I just put on cruise control and I go at a consistent rate. And the other is I have another gauge that tells me what kind of mileage I'm getting at the moment, mm -hmm. and uh, since I'm thrifty, um, um, that one also encourages me to rein in my speeding a little bit. So, so, so the concern is that unless we're paying attention in, our, in, in, in all of our day-to-day -day living, we can get swept up with the agenda that really is the agenda of other people and it's not necessarily consistent with our Christian mm -hmm. faith. Excellent.